So welcome to Night Hacking at the Ordev conference. I'm joined by Glenn Block, and we're gonna we're gonna chat a little bit about Splunk. Yeah. So that that almost sounds like a um, like a dangerous word. <laughs> <laughs> well. So what's a, what's a Splunk? <laughs> Splunk is a data analytics platform for um, operational intelligence. We say, which basically means we are. Um, we are analyzing time series data. Now, time series data uh, comes from many different places. Um, one of the most common cases is you have servers that are generating logs. Well, when those logs are getting generated, all of those entries within uh, those logs are time series. They have uh, a timestamp associated with them. So what Splunk will do is it can take in data from many different formats and sources, that is time series data, and it will allow you to search against that data real time. Um, and one of the things that's really powerful about the product is the fact that we say it is schema at read time. So we take in the data and there's no schema that's applied. And we have a very efficient engine that knows how to process different types of common formats like JSON. Um, it can look at loose text and pull out key value pairs out of that data. Um, and you can even tweak it further with regular expressions to deal with files that are not, um, don't have a structure, a, a structure similar to like JSON or XML or CSV. Um, so it's really, really powerful. And it has, it has support for a lot of common log formats like Apache, uh, MySQL, SQL Server, IIS built in. So what are the, some of the common use cases people use Splunk for? So one of the most common cases is IT operations, troubleshooting. Um, so the product is really, really scalable. So I can deploy these agents, we call them forwarders, that sit very close to where the data is generated. And it will tail logs for me, for example, pick up those logs and send that data into Splunk. Um, and when that data is sent into Splunk, it can be sent to a pool of what we call indexers. So it can really, really scale out. And then on the other side, I'm able to search against that data. I can do real-time reporting on that data. And I can do alerting. So I can take a search. I can save that search and set it to run on an interval and say, well, anytime any results come back that match this search, I want to send like an SMS message or an email. So operations is really one of the biggest places yeah, okay. where we started. So that, that makes a lot of sense, given you do log analysis and that sort of mm -hmm. stuff. What, mm -hmm. what, what other scenarios do security. people use it for? Security. security. So one third of our customers use us for security. And we were in Gartner's magic quadrant for SIM. Um, so we are, uh, so if you're doing things like anomaly detection, uh, intrusion analysis, these kind of things, Splunk is really great for that, Got particularly it. because of the fact that it handles real-time data. The, you know, you, you don't have to just look at historical data. You can do a query with Splunk that is continually monitoring forward, and any time any kind of red flags come up, you immediately are able to take proactive action. Cool, and um, if you want to programmatically access Splunk and do things, what, what languages and APIs do you support? Sure, so at the bottom, Splunk as itself is really an API server. So the Splunk admin tool is a JavaScript application. It basically is using JavaScript to talk to our API. So, Got it. so foremost, we have an API that so anybody you, can you talk to. you use your own API in the tool itself? We use good. our own API, and, and I gave a talk on this recently, how we made this strategic decision early on to say we have one API that the product and our customers use. There's no hidden tricks or anything like that. If our browser is really just static HTML mm -hmm. that is just making JSON-type requests back and forth to the server. Um, but we have SDKs in six different languages. One you'll probably be pretty happy about is we have a Java SDK. <laughs> um, it turns out that Java is one of our largest communities uh, in terms of developers that use our SDK. We're really big in the Java community. And part of that is because Splunk is really big in the enterprise, and there's a lot of Java developers in the enterprise, as you know. Yeah, yeah. no, that is the core strength of, of Java. Yeah. <laughs> But so we support speaking, Python, we support Ruby, PHP, uh, JavaScript, which, you know, there's a lot yeah. of JavaScript happening in the world today, and uh, C Sharp. Well, even most Java backend apps are some hybrid of Java backend, JavaScript front end, so it all, it all goes together. So have you guys adopted the new Java releases? Um, so we support Java 8. We're testing on Java 8. We haven't added any Java 8 specific features yet. Mm -hmm. um, but that is something you're, you're that doing, we will... I think you're doing better than average. 
<laughs> <laughs> Given it's only been out since March and you're already testing and supporting it. Well, um, we're making sure it works. That's our, our prime goal at this point is to at least make sure people can use it. And then, you know, one challenge we have to think about is how to add features in such a way that it doesn't break existing customers. Um, and I know, like, uh, I, I had some conversations at the event about how, for example, we could support, um, um, like Lambdas, by, you know, adding, I think maybe you told me that, adding some delegate signatures or things like that that wouldn't break backward compatibility because they would still be compatible with earlier versions of Java. Um, yeah, we also, no, yeah you can also take advantage of the default methods, which they added in Java 8 to do backwards compatibility on the Java APIs, so you won't break backwards compatibility with your own um, previous customers or previous usage of your API. Oh, cool. Cool. So, yeah, no, sounds like you guys have really good language support for, for Java and a host of different languages on Splunk. Um, so what, what else is cool and exciting? Do you have any new like features or releases or things going on? or What, what, do you, what are you excited about? Well, so one of the things I'm excited about is in the last uh, year, we released an Eclipse plugin uh, for Java developers. So it helps you really get going with um, uh, building an app that can integrate and talk to Splunk. One of the things we also allow, though, is we push the polyglot nature of Splunk to the server. You can actually extend Splunk in a bunch of different languages, including Java. Cool. So one of the really, and, and we also recently added support for Node.js, um, so that you can take JavaScript, and we already had a JavaScript SDK that you can use in the browser or on the server, but we also added the ability to extend Splunk with Node, and the kind of extensibility that you're doing there is Splunk by default knows how to do things like read files. You can open up ports like TCP or UDP to send data to it. But let's say I wanted to talk to an API for me or something like Jenkins, where you know I don't have access to the log files directly, but I have access to some API endpoints. You can teach Splunk to talk to new sources of data, and one of the languages you can do that in is Java. Cool. No, that sounds interesting. So yeah. So have it's, you it's have really you already cool. given your talk here at Ordev, or is it upcoming? I have. Um, I gave my talk um, on my my talk on Splunk was on Wednesday. Nice, nice. Yeah. And what were some of the good questions you got at the at the talk about Splunk? I didn't leave a lot of time for questions. <laughs> <laughs> that, um, that is a good presentation <laughs> trick if anyone's watching. No, we did. I did. I did get some questions afterwards. Um, well, people ask us, how do we match up to like Elasticsearch? Um, yeah. You know, we're using Elasticsearch. How do we think about Splunk? So that, w that was an interesting question. I think a lot of people were impressed with the developer platform capabilities because what happens is, because Splunk has really an IT ops kind of, it often comes into companies through the IT ops organization. And yeah. developers may already have it in their companies. They just don't know about it or they don't have access to it. Yeah, no, that's, that's interesting. So but there was it, some sounds interesting like, it sounds like you have a lot more entry points for developers to, to interface with the data and do interesting we things. We do, but if it comes in through an IT organization, they've got to open that up. They've got to yeah. allow those developers by giving them users and things like that. So that was actually the biggest question that I got was, hey, we're in an environment where our IT guys have Splunk. We want to get access to it. What do we have to do? Got it. How do we navigate that? Cool. Cool. That's exciting. Um, and what, what, are your, what are your plans here while you're out in Malmo? So I've been in Europe exciting. for two weeks, um, so I'm ready to go home. <laughs> My next plan is to go home on Saturday. That, um, but that it's been like a, a but it's been a fabulous event. It's been I'm, really, I'm one really week good. behind you on that one. I, I forgot to mention one key thing also is that Splunk has a product called Hunk, which can integrate with other types of data stores. We have our own proprietary data store, and one of those is Hadoop. Nice. So um, Hunk will basically talk, allow you to use HDFS to you know, have all of your evented data, and then you can basically utilize Splunk's UI to query your Hadoop cluster. And we've been getting a lot of traction uh, with customers that have Hadoop and Splunk. It's not a this or that. They're saying, we have both. We'd like to integrate them. So yeah, so that's, that's a really interesting thing. And we're, and we're opening it up to other data sources like Neo for J and other kinds of MongoDB, other kinds of NoSQL sources as well. Cool. Yep. All right, well, thanks a lot for the short interview, Glenn, and I hope you have a safe trip back. Awesome. Thank you, Stephen.